So today, today is my birthday, and there's all kinds of gifts in the news for me yesterday and today with Tucker Carlson getting fired, um, Fox lost another lawsuit, the, the Murdochs did, because um, they tried to sue for def crikey for defamation, and the they had to um, withdraw or dismiss their own case, because had they gone through with it, all of the evidence that had been submitted to the case that they just settled with um, Dominion would have been available for that trial and they would have ended up having to, and they may still, I don't know, um, pay for the attorney's fees uh, of Crikey, which is a news, an Australian news agency. Uh, that's, that's a really interesting story too, but I'm not going to delve into that right now. But anyway, Biden announced this morning, uh, which we all expected him to do, and he came out with um, his new messaging, a pretty powerful ad. I think that um, as a marketing professional myself, a proposal manager, that uh, he followed Barack Obama's strategy of, but he did it a lot sooner, which is actually, I think, a good strategy, considering how contentious this particular presidential race is going to be early on before the primaries even happen. So his strategy, his messaging is freedom. And I can't think of a better way to encapsulate this moment in time than to say that that's exactly what the GOP wants to take away from you in every one of those candidates. They want to take away your freedoms. So this is perfect. Um, perfect messaging. I think it's a great strategy and let's see how this goes. I think his numbers are probably going to go up um, because the GOP looks like they're self-destructing. But let's see what, what they've done here. Let's see what they've done here. And we can now call the 2024 presidential race for Joe Biden. The Republican Party have released a wild AI generated political ad in response to Joe Biden announcing his run for re-election. So I'm going to show you this ad. It is just, it, honestly, when I first watched it, I laughed out loud at how ridiculous. Well, and on top of it, the very first sentence you say, you see, this is going to be their messaging. They're going to try and call him weak or sleepy or, but the fact is that his track record does not indicate that. And he's getting well received in all of our ally nations which is not the case with Trump. Um, and should they continue to pursue that, that it won't be from Biden's campaign directly, but it'll be like a PAC that's supporting Biden. will I'm sure um, do a juxtaposition of Biden's reception in, in these countries versus Trump's. And that's gonna look bad for him. He's gonna look weak. Um, the only, uh, people that he seems to get along with are dictators and everybody else makes fun of him because he's horrible and he knows it. He's, he's ignorant. He just makes things up and he says it with confidence. So his base who are also ignorant, uh, they're like, yeah, sure. Okay. I'll, I'll go with whatever you say, Trump. <laughs> the entire thing is, but it's right in line with what these people do. First, let me show you uh, quickly here. Biden's announcement on Twitter. I'm not going to play the video. It's three minutes long, but it's a video. I'll link to it below if you care to watch it. Joe Biden writing here, or at least his campaign team writing here. Every generation has a moment where they have had to stand up for democracy, to stand up for their fundamental freedoms. I believe this is ours. That's why I'm running for re-election as president of the United States. Join us. Let's finish the job. Now, uh, Axios broke the story about the, uh, the, the first look at the AI-generated ad, writing that the RNC has produced this video that is 100% AI according to a spokesperson. Wow. Let's check it out. This just in, we can now call the 2024 presidential race for Joe Biden. This morning, an emboldened China invades Taiwan. Financial markets are in free fall as 500 regional banks have shuttered their doors. Border agents were overrun by a surge of 80,000 illegals yesterday evening. Officials closed the city of San Francisco this morning, citing the escalating crime and fentanyl crisis. Who's in charge here? It feels like the train is coming off the tracks. Oh, okay. Oh, that's I laughed. It. Wait, 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 wait. 
I love it. They're making the same mistake that Hillary made in 2016 when she had um, Love Trump's Hate. If they're going to, if their slogan is going to be beat Biden, they're going to repeat, repeat his name over and over and over again to their fan base, to their voters. And that was the big problem with Hillary's campaign is she had all these, all this messaging that said loves, love Trump's hate. And so he, he was getting more and more and more name recognition. You go GOP. Let's go with beat Biden. That sounds like great messaging. Let's go. That's not watered down bullshit. By the way, we don't call people illegal fucking bigots. <laughs> They're undocumented. And the people who have been coming up are refugees. Holy crap. Again, that was wonderful. So absolutely ridiculous. Let me go over what they uh, focus on here in this fake future. AI generated future of China invading Taiwan. This is, by the way, just it, the, the whole premise is kind of hilarious because they're imagining Biden winning a second term. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that means they failed. Yeah. <laughs> but essentially here, putting it on the voters, scaring the voters. Oh, you have to vote because if Biden wins again, well, what if China invades Taiwan? Yeah, this is like this is like their version of any red will do. Right. This is the version of any red will do. Do you want Trump in control of that? <laughs> is that is that going to improve the situation or financial markets will be in free fall mm. like the pandemic under donald trump right or the financial collapse under republicans in 08 yep madness at the border they had to throw some xenophobia in there you know for good measure this is just <laughs> so by the way for for all the um complaints that people have about uh clinton's policy and his you know womanizing behavior his, he, I mean, all of these guys in power apparently seem that, to think they can fuck anybody, but we had the widest economic expansion in our history under Clinton's administration. And uh, every time we put a Democratic in, in, in office, a Democrat in office, we actually do pull things back in so that we are closing the deficit, so that we're balancing the budget. And so that we're being fiscally responsible. But Republicans, they want to spend as much fucking money on, as possible on corporate welfare, on the military industrial complex. And this is why it's hilarious to watch the people who purported themselves to be leftists and got all cozy on Bernie's campaign. He really surrounded himself with the wrong people. Watch them just berate anybody on the progressive side who got into office as a Democrat or who is a liberal Democrat, when they have, whether they get everything done for us or not, they do things for us. Whereas the GOP, all they do is take things away and make the world less safe. Ridiculous. And really, they don't even, they don't need AI to put their message forward here. This is stuff that you know their base would already believe, regardless, because they believe anything they're told. It's all about scaring people notice how there is nothing here about what the republican party is offering right no policies not even any, any hope here like it's it's <laughs> at least throw i don't know some rhetorical hope out there but it's just pure pure fear because they understand how their voting base operates they think so so poorly of them that they know they can scare them into voting so as a vice writes here the GOP AI ad might be imagining a future dystopia, but uh, it's one that's intended uh, audience already believes, as I said, we live in today. Americans don't need AI generated images to imagine they're being overrun by immigrants and that their cities have devolved into anarchy, just like they don't need deep fakes to believe lies about Nancy Pelosi. And that last point is about back in 2019, uh, Trump tweeted a video of uh, Nancy Pelosi that was altered to make her look and sound drunk by slowing this slowing down the speed of the video to uh, 75 percent so they, they've already been manipulating video to try and uh put a uh, you know a message out there but um i guess ai gives them potentially a larger ability to do that 
Last point here from Vice. Like many political ads, it's not about policy or material changes to people's lives. It's about a vision for America, one where you should fear your neighbor and the end times are nigh. And it's just the oldest trick in the book with a fresh coat of paint. It really is. Uh, it, you know, part of the reason why I think my reaction here is also laughter is because this is all they've been running on for years. And it didn't work last time. Well, I mean... It's more than that. It's like all the complaints that we've ever had about uh, Democratic consultants and the poor messaging. This is right in line with that. It, it's hilarious because I don't know if maybe they've lost their best marketing people. Apparently not because that Pat got that great pudding commercial on DeSantis. Um, so the marketing people are still out there. But this uh, this is so lazy that they, they went entirely to AI to just invent a future of what's going to happen and just yeah they they hype they 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 hype up the fears the fears they 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 demonize um entire groups of people and um they make especially middle america like people who wouldn't even be affected by what kind of dark you know like undocumented refugees are coming across the border to seek asylum um mostly not going to affect middle America yet they seem to have the the strongest opinions about um hating on brown people I, I just don't get it I don't get it but um I I think this ad is pretty bad and um if if I can I'll grab um what how like what AI looks like and how it can be used and how it will um potentially affect the upcoming elections not just the presidential election, other elections too, because apparently it's pretty easy to access programs that will create AI for you. Not saying it can't work again, but considering Trump right now is still the front runner, the more we see of Ron DeSantis, the less people seem to uh, like him. Um, I So we're talking a potential... By the way, the head twitching that everybody's been talking about and... I, I think it's a little unfair for y'all to be like, hmm. So all these live streamers are like, I don't think it was a medical event. Well, okay. So are you saying that because you're afraid of like, um, are you afraid of having a defamation suit if you say, I don't know, but that might have been a medical event. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the pictures of Hillary twitching. And to my mind, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a doctor, but to my mind, I think they both had similar um, anxiety type responses where they got nervous, they were shaky, they were trying to shake it off, and um, it just came across weird looking. But also you could compare that uh, DeSantis moment with the Howard Dean's, uh, Dean scream. These are, these are silly moments that are captured once in, in time, but can be used against them over and over and over again of look at how silly this person looks in this moment, right? So they caught this horrible moment of the Santis <laughs> twitching out, shaking his head around. And he, he, you know, he looks pretty, let me see if I can find it. Hold up. Okay. So here, here's the, what they're calling the DeSantis bobblehead. Okay, here's the Hillary one where um, Republicans are trying to imply that she had a seizure. Meaningful endorsement in every way. And I was very proud of that. Did you talk about vice presidential possibilities with Senator Warren? You guys have got to try the cold chai. I've had it. It is delicious. All right. That yeah, see? It's unfortunate this one doesn't have sound, but this is the Howard Dean scream, and this was the end of his campaign, pretty much. Okay, back to David. The exact same matchup as 2020. Has Trump gained support <laughs> since 2020? Because I don't think he has. It's just the same base of voters. So, ultimately, it is on... It is on turnout. And that... A lot of that falls on to uh, Biden here, who, you know, it's, hasn't been, hasn't done the greatest job, you know, ha has, has had its moments in terms of speaking to some of the right issues, but in terms of actually delivering, 
you know, you could argue, yes, uh, he doesn't have much of a chance right now with a divided Congress, but he did before, the first four years. They didn't accomplish a whole lot, but again, you could say, well, mansion, cinema, okay. There are a thousand excuses. All that aside, if it's down to Trump and Biden again, come on. I think it's pretty clear. You, you <laughs> Do you really want to go back to Donald Trump? So, but again, it's about turnout. So is, is Biden going to be able to get enough people out in the right states to vote? So yes, he won by 7 million votes, but a lot of those votes, New York, California, states are going to win anyways. When it comes to the Electoral College, what actually decides the, the election, he needs to get people out in the right states. And that goes to speak. And that, that boils down to the fear that the Democrats can create by, hey, you know, you remember what it was like under Trump. You remember how on day one he signed the Muslim ban. He, we had um, the rise of Nazis in our country. They came to Charlottesville. They killed Heather Heyer. Um, we had the uh, attack on the, the ICE raids and attack on the immigrant community. Uh, we had the attack on women right away. Um, and, you know, and this is to give a, a full assessment of all of the crap he did to us. I, I don't even think I could run down the whole list, but I'm sure somebody has put something together to show how terrible it was during his presidency. And then we go into a pandemic and he didn't even have the PPE for our, our medical staff or for us. We had to hide or cover our mouths with bandanas, which wasn't even safe because we didn't we couldn't buy masks right away. We couldn't get cleaning supplies. We couldn't get supplies. It totally interrupted the supply chain. And then he tells everybody, just go out, reopen America. Well, he, first he tells the old people to do it, right? He says, senior citizens, your life's almost over. You should be the ones who go out and, and run, you know, like make sure that the economy keeps going, right? <laughs> it's like people's memories are so short. And then, you know, then he gets all his friends sick. He gets all the people closest to him sick. People within his own circle died. People within in his own circle have permanent injuries from the pandemic. Chris Christie almost died. And with all that, that's not even including how much he riled up his base to actually hurt people, to attack people, to try and kidnap a governor, to do an insurrection, to try and run Kamala Harris off the road while uh, they were campaigning in the 2020 cycle. He has encouraged his base to actually murder anybody who disagrees with them. This is real and we've seen it and people need to stop pretending like it didn't happen. Okay, back to his video. To some of these more, you know, working class issues, speaking to wages, speaking to unions, that's what's going to help uh, push him over the line again if he is going to do it. But uh, that's, you know, years away, or not years away, but a year and a half away. Uh, I guess this is going to be <laughs> what the Republicans are going to do. Go back to the fear mongering and see if it works. Okay, hold on a second. Let's pause that. Um, so let's also like, take, take a look at Brian Tyler Cohen's um, coverage of the ad uh, that was released by Biden this morning. And um, also, I, I would tend to agree more with Brian Tyler Cohen's take on Biden's performance um, in this, uh, rather than, I, David has a more rational take than most of the progressive live streamers out there who have d done things like promote Miriam Williamson, which I think actually David has too. But um, that's just not realistic. It's not realistic. And, and it should tell you something that I think the last poll I saw, he, she was trending at 5%. Okay. And apparently uh, uh, RFK, who uh, people just hear the name and they think, oh, he's a Kennedy. He must be, he must be a liberal. He must be great. He's an anti-vaxxer and he's, he's polling right now at 14%. So you have to be... Live streamers, you have a responsibility 
to make sure that you are not um, giving your audience unrealistic visions about what we can get accomplished. And that's why I appreciate Brian Tyler Cohen's coverage of the, the new ad. Hold on. Okay, here we go. This is Brian Tyler. This includes the ad, but it also includes his analysis. Freedom. Personal freedom is fundamental to who we are as Americans. There's nothing more important, nothing more sacred. That's been the work of my first term, to fight for our democracy. It shouldn't be a red or blue issue. To protect our rights, to make sure that everyone in this country is treated equally and that everyone is given a fair shot at making it. But you know, around the country, MAGA extremists are lining up to take on those bedrock freedoms. Cutting Social Security that you paid for your entire life while cutting taxes for the very wealthy. Dictating what health care decisions women can make. Banning books and telling people who they can love. All while making it more difficult for you to be able to vote. for president four years ago i said we're in a battle for the soul of america and we still are the question we're facing is whether in the years ahead we have more freedom or less freedom more rights or fewer i know what i want the answer to be and i think you do too this is not a time to be complacent that's why i'm running for re-election because i know america I know we're good and decent people. I know we're still a country that believes in honesty and respect and treating each other with dignity. That we're a nation where we give hate no safe harbor. We believe that everyone is equal, that everyone should be given a fair shot to succeed in this country. Thank you for choosing us. You. Every generation of Americans has faced a moment when they have to defend democracy. Stand up for our personal freedom. Stand up for the right to vote and our civil rights. And this is our moment. Well, let's talk about why that works much better than the GOP strategy. It's because it's almost um, as simple as, for those of you who um, have done any sort of reading to improve your leadership skills, uh, there's a very simple book came out decades ago called The One Minute Manager. And part of it talks about disciplining employees. And you're supposed to sandwich the critical feedback in praise, right? So you have a positive message on the front, your um, critical messaging in the middle, and positive messaging on the end. This is a very simple formula in marketing. It's a very simple formula in leadership, in managing people. And right now, that was an excellent idea for, for this commercial, because right now, it's like you're having to educate all of these brainwashed people that there are happy things around you, but you're focusing on this section in the middle of being bad, of doing things that are hurtful, of assaulting people. You're focusing so much on hate, and the GOP did that to you. Donald Trump did that to you. That's why, see, they have their fear message too, but they delivered it so much better. 
It's official. Joe Biden is running for re-election in 2024, and he's running on an agenda of freedom, which is ironic since the idea of freedom used to be a Republican talking point, and yet when Republicans actually took power, their platform was entirely focused on taking that freedom away. The gap between what Republicans say when they're campaigning and what they do when they actually have power is so wide, you could fly a plane through it. Now, I know so much of the coverage surrounding politics right now is just about the horse race. It's about who's up in the polls, who's down, who said what about who, and so we're left with very little substance. Everyone can tell you what the latest poll said, but barely anyone knows what's actually going on to warrant any votes. So for anyone asking why vote for Joe Biden, what's he actually gotten done, here's what we've seen in just the last two years. In only two years since Biden's been president, we got the American Rescue Plan, which led to the fastest recovery in modern American history after a recession. Keep in mind, it took four years to recover from the Great Recession. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, our recovery took a year. In 2020, U.S. GDP contracted at 3.4%. In 2021, GDP grew at 5.7%. In 2020, the unemployment rate was 8.1%. In 2021, that unemployment rate was down to 5.4%. In 2020, 9.3 million American jobs were lost. In 2021, 6.7 million American jobs were created. That is what you get when you pass policies that benefit people from the bottom up, not the top down. Trickle down does not work. It hasn't worked since the 80s, and it hasn't worked during a single recovery. And if Republicans cared about anything other than helping their wealthy donors, they might actually be able to acknowledge that objective reality. Since Biden's been president, we got an infrastructure upgrade that was nothing more than a punchline in the last administration, and it'll include not just roads and bridges, but broadband even in rural communities that rarely, if ever, vote for Democrats. It's not about red versus blue. It is about helping everyone. Trump used it as a cheap applause line to get your votes before only bothering to give himself a tax cut. Biden actually got it done. Since Biden's been president, we got the first gun safety bill in 30 years, where states got funding for red flag laws, domestic abusers were blocked from owning guns, and background checks were expanded for 18 to 20 year olds. You all know what schools are like now. Mass shooting drills, SWAT teams going classroom to classroom, and instead of doing anything meaningful, Republicans are helping prop up cottage industries selling bulletproof backpacks to kids. We need common sense gun safety reforms, we need an assault weapons ban, and we need it now. Joe Biden had the courage to call for automatic weapons to be banned, while Republicans watch these mass shootings unfold and immediately run to the defense of the gun. Since Biden's been president, we passed the Inflation Reduction Act, the single biggest investment to fight climate change in the history of the world. It includes tax credits for EVs and energy efficient appliances. It includes funding for nationwide vehicle charging networks. On the healthcare front, it finally allows the government to negotiate lower drug prices. It caps out of pocket costs for seniors at $2,000 a month. And it caps insulin at $35 a month for Medicare recipients, which pressured insulin manufacturers to lower costs for all insulin in this country. And it's paid for by imposing a 15% corporate minimum tax on the billion dollar companies that pay zero, and by funding the IRS so we can finally catch ultra wealthy tax cheats who rely on little to no enforcement to be able to avoid paying their fair share. And of all of those things, you know what the GOP's sole priority is now? Stripping IRS enforcement so that tax cheats can get away with it again. Because lest you forget, their priority is their wealthy donors and no one else. Since Biden's been president, we've passed the CHIPS Act, which has led to an explosion in manufacturing jobs. 800,000 since Biden took office. Between CHIPS and the Inflation Reduction Act, just to give you a few examples, Toyota is investing $2.5 billion in manufacturing EV batteries in this country. First Solar is investing $1.2 billion in solar panels. Sparks is building an electric battery factory. Corning's investing $42.5 billion in fiber optic cables. LG and Honda are investing $4.4 billion in EV batteries. Micron's investing $40 billion in chips. Qualcomm's investing $4.2 billion in chips. Intel's investing $100 billion in chips. That is hundreds of thousands, if not millions of jobs right there. All jobs that were delayed when Republicans held power because their priority was propping up dirty energy. We lose jobs in coal every year. And yet, because that industry is what pays Republicans, that's the only one they look out for. Every year we are not focusing on clean energy and renewables is another year of billions of dollars of investments lost and millions of jobs sacrificed to places like China, where Republicans fearmonger about. They will sacrifice every single one of those jobs because they're only looking out for their own. Yep. Sweat. We'll stop there for a second. Okay, let's continue. Looking out for their 
own. Since Biden's been president, we've passed the PACT Act, giving health care to sick veterans. We forgave student loan debt for 43 million borrowers, a move that Republicans immediately challenged in court. We pardoned all federal offenses for simple marijuana possession and started the process of removing cannabis from the list of Schedule One drugs like heroin. Passed legislation funding baby formula, which Republicans voted against. Passed legislation preventing price gouging at the pump, which Republicans voted against. Passed legislation codifying same-sex marriage, which Republicans voted against. Passed legislation protecting birth control, which Republicans voted against. Passed legislation codifying Roe, which Republicans voted against. They have attacked Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. They've attacked LGBT students. They've banned books, banned abortion. Hell, they are trying right now to sink the U.S. economy by refusing to lift the debt ceiling unless Democrats pass a budget that undoes all of their priorities. These people are not here to legislate. They are here to cause chaos. They don't want to fix things. They want to see them burn. The fact is that I'm not here to make some nebulous argument about what the Democrats will or won't do or what the Republicans will or won't do based on vibes. This is all based on what the parties have done. So don't listen to what these people say. Watch what they do. So look, you may not be the biggest fan of Joe Biden, and that's your prerogative. But I think what's beyond debate is that this guy has been the most accomplished president since FDR. He knows how to win elections, and he knows how to pass an agenda. And in a day and age where both of those things are fleeting, we should consider ourselves beyond lucky to have a candidate who can do both. And finally, I'll end with this, a line from Joe Biden himself. Don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. The fact is that the choice in this election will be binary. You may not like it, again, that's fair, but that's the reality. And so this will be a choice not between some romanticized West Wing version of what you want in a candidate, but in two actual people as flawed as they may be. And it is nearly certain that those two people will be Joe Biden and Donald Trump. So before you write off Joe Biden because you didn't... Well, what, the other thing that's important is that when we consider what has been passed, and what has been done, you have to consider the makeup of Congress. If you want more progressive legislation passed, then work harder on getting more senators and House of Representatives seats. Like everybody I see complaining, um, I very few of them actually show up and do the activist work necessary to get these things done. Um, I just saw a whole Twitter argument of a bunch of centrists complaining because apparently Joe Biden wants to um, nominate Neera Tandon for something again. And the last time he tried to nominate her, progressives went wild because she has a poor history of relations with the progressive community. And um, these centrists were having a field day trying to get into the Bernie bro argument again. And honestly, that is not the way that you unify the left in order to get things done. Y'all should stop arguing so much on Twitter, get out and volunteer to walk blocks, to make phone calls, to do some postcarding, to do if you have the means, but as Nina Turner says, donate your time, treasure or talent and get those seats. Because if you're constantly on the sidelines, just playing Monday morning quarterback and whining about it, we're not going to get the house back. Those house seats are very critical. And we have a better shot at it because generally Democrats turn out for a general election far more than they do for the midterms. But on top of it, y'all need to show up for the primaries too. You want your candidate to move forward? Get out and vote for him. An excellent example of this would be when Kenneth Mejia ran for special election in Congressional District 34 in Los Angeles against Jimmy Gomez and Arturo Carmona. He didn't, he didn't advance. He was running his Green Party. He did not advance, but he completely changed his strategy when he ran for city controller just last year, and he did win that seat. He won city controller because, one, he Dem entered and ran as a Democrat, so he ended up having all of the volunteer resources from local clubs and from the county party. You don't get those resources if you run as a Green Party or if you run as an independent. You're not going to get those resources. But if you participate in areas where there are already concentrated volunteers, you're going to get more. But on top of it, he had an excellent marketing campaign. He put up billboards saying, um, comparing some sort of dollar amount spent on the police budget versus the dollar amount spent on solving the homelessness crisis in L.A., 
it was a very effective marketing campaign. But he, he also, I mean, I saw when I was up there working for Unite Here and we were trying to advance our candidate for city council, which was Hugo Soto Martinez, um, because that's where the, the union members had voted that they wanted to spend their PAC resources to get that election completed and to get certain measures on the ballot. So that's what I was working on last year when I got injured. There were, I was in the field six days a week for the most part until I got injured. And we were already seeing Kenneth Mejia signs, yard signs on people's lawns. And you know, you'd be surprised. You get out there and you talk to people, they're smarter than you think. And they're willing to listen especially if they're in, into politics, they are willing to have a conversation with you. Let's continue. Get everything you wanted during his first term or because of his age, both of which, by the way, are fair criticisms. Think about the alternative, a criminal defendant whose agenda is to roll back civil rights and abortion rights and usher in some perverted form of Christo-fascist rule in the United States. That is the reality of what this election will look like. We've gotten a lot in just two years, and if Democrats turn out in 2024, we can do more, like codifying abortion, raising the minimum wage, passing the PRO Act, continuing to lower health care costs, and finding finally passing the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. We've gotten a small taste of what functional government can actually look like. Now is not the time to get complacent. It is time to fight harder than ever to make sure we continue to build on the progress of these last few years. AI is going to be a big deal during this election cycle. I've been trying to locate the POD Saves America um, episode where one of the, one of the fellows did he used just like an online program that um it it was a paid subscription though it was a paid subscription but he was able to um create messages to the pod safe america podcast of um biden congratulating them on their success of their program and they also did obama and I can't find it, but it happened a few weeks ago, I think. And it was it was funny, it was good, but this type of technology is gonna be very confusing for people during this election cycle. And it's not only gonna be directed at Biden, it's gonna be directed at other candidates we run. So while you're complaining online on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you are, if you're not volunteering, if you're not trying to help elect the candidates that we can lobby and can move the legislation forward with, then you're not helping us. You're not helping us. So if you wanna just sit back, wait, cast your vote, fine. But there's no reason anybody should be going online, passing out so much negative messaging right now when we have a real battle ahead of us that's gonna involve a lot of deceptive marketing from the GOP. And that is illustrated today in the release of their attack ad on Biden um, that was entirely AI generated. So there you go. It's already contentious.